I created a new tomato variety and they are ripe. So we're gonna do a taste test to see how these things taste. I created these tomatoes by cross-pollinating two different tomato varieties by hand. For the father plant, I use the Black Beauty heirloom tomatoes, like these ones I have growing right here. And then we did something a little weird. For the female host, we used a hybrid. I used the Cherry Bomb F1 hybrid. You can see that these are a very vigorous type of tomato. Their genes have a late blight resistance to them. And if you plant seeds from a hybrid, they are not gonna grow true. They're gonna revert back to the parental genes. So right here we have a volunteer tomato plant that came up from the Cherry Bomb F1 hybrid and these are the fruits on it. They're little plum tomatoes, which is part of the original genes of a Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bombs are definitely one of my favorites because I just like coming out here and eating these right off the vines. And they're such sweet tomatoes, and I like sweet tomatoes. So I'm hoping the ones we created have some of that sweetness to them. And I really didn't know what to expect when I was crossing into a hybrid. But it seems like most of the seeds I saved are growing the same way. They all look pretty much the same. But there are a couple oddballs in there. So these guys, you can see the darker tops on them. This one I like a little bit better. It's a little bit darker. Looks a little bit cooler. Then from the same tomato that I saved the seeds from, I have this going on. So these don't even look like cherry tomatoes. They're like giant clusters of mini beefsteak looking tomatoes. And I know there's no seed mix up here because I saved these separate from everything else. So I'm anxious to see what these are going to be like when they ripen. They don't have that black top I was looking for. But the plan here is to take these seeds from the new tomatoes, the best looking one I can find. I'm going to keep replanting these and any of them that keep having the traits I want, I'm gonna keep saving seeds and replanting those. In this video, I'm not going to go into how I made these. It's actually pretty tough to cross-pollinate tomatoes because they have what's called a perfect flower. So they pollinate themselves. So even when you plant tomatoes pretty close together in the garden, they're usually gonna self-pollinate. So you really don't have to worry about too much actual cross-pollination going on, even with the bees going back and forth. Not to say it doesn't happen, but it's pretty rare. And with having so many different varieties out there now, you can probably already find something out there that meets your look and taste. So let's come in here. This is the plant I like the most. It has the most accent of the black on top, even when ripe versus the other plants. Let's go ahead and grab this nice juicy red ripe one right there. And for size comparison, here is the Cherry Bomb F1 Hybrid. This is one of the bigger ones I could find versus the one we created. It's like a cherry tomato, but it's actually pretty big. It's like inch and a half across. And you can just see that little bit of darkness up at the top there from the Black Beauty Male Flower. So this, a year in the making right here to make this tomato to see if it tastes good. And if it's a good variety or a complete failure. This one looks like she might be a double biter. So I'm just going to take a little nip at it and try to see how it tastes. Real nice and red on the inside. It is good. It's a little less sweet than the Cherry Bomb. It does have a little hint of the taste you'd expect out of something like a beef steak, one of the bigger tomatoes. It probably gets that from the Black Beauty. Probably going to have to try another more for quality control purposes. One of the parts I'm struggling with with this is these tomatoes are in the sun right now, so they're a little bit warmer than the Cherry Bombs, which are getting some afternoon shade, which they enjoy. So the extra warmness of this is throwing the flavor off a bit. So I'm probably going to have to do this again later when the sun's not around. Probably an early morning visit to the garden. Because I think it does have like a little bit of a floral taste to it. Almost a little fruitiness to it. So when it's a little cooler out and I can give this a shot, I think I'm going to be able to taste that a little bit better. It does have that, which I think it does. That's going to be really exciting. And if we can stabilize something like this, it's going to be pretty cool. Because these are big clusters of oversized cherry tomatoes. And cherry tomatoes are my favorite. 
There's going to be a lot of tomato testing this year. Here we have the giant crimson from seeds I saved from three years ago. Still growing strong here. We got the Brad's Atomic grape as well as black strawberry growing out of my lawn here. And would you look at that? I was just looking for the label of this plant. And look who I found down here eating a dead leaf on the ground. Thought I wasn't going to have to deal with these guys this year. A little tobacco hornworm hanging out. I'm just going to leave that there. Let it eat. There's so much growth here. I really don't prune these tomatoes, so I got enough to share. And they may decimate your tomatoes, but the hawk moth that comes out of the tomato and tobacco hornworms, or the sphinx moth, hummingbird moth, whatever you want to call it, is an important nighttime pollinator with a long proboscis that can get down some flowers that other pollinators can't. So I like to leave them. Here's some more of the hybrids I created with a little less accent of the black on top. Chocolate stripes. Here's another cross I did that I'm going to call a failure because I don't like the way they look. This is a black beauty crossed into a giant crimson tomato. So I'm not exactly sure what happened here. We had two beefsteak style heirloom tomatoes. We crossed them and we have these rather large round tomatoes. There's not really black accent on there. There's a little bit of darker green on it. Once they get ripe, I'm going to see how they taste, but just they're not visually appealing. But I'm probably going to learn from this year that visually appealing does not mean great taste because there's a lot of weird looking tomatoes out there that catch your eye that you want to grow. And I don't think they're all going to taste that great. The Atlantic Giant Pumpkins over here in this guild are starting to put on some weight. I don't know what's going on with this guy. He's growing kind of weird like an egg shape. More tomatoes back here with the tree, some comfrey in there. Just trying to cover the soil up. Just taking a look at the garden and coming through here and grabbing ripe tomatoes to eat. Because I really don't like to preserve stuff. I just like to eat it fresh the way it's meant to be eaten. I wasn't going to make a video today. I just wanted to make sure that everyone came along for the long-awaited one-year wait taste test of the tomato I created because I know I mentioned last year that I was doing this so it worked tastes pretty good we're gonna taste it when it's a little cooler out we're gonna have more tomatoes more peppers eggplants everything's starting to get ripe it's that time of year right now so make sure you like and subscribe to follow along thanks for watching